Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome everybody to the Wednesday evening Victory Church service. Uh, welcome everyone who's joining us, joining us online. We're going to start by reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 104. First few verses on, in Psalm 104. Hear the word of, word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers, a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. For every God doing mighty works is worthy of our praise. I want to invite you, if you're able to, stand right now as we go before the Lord in prayer. Let's we lift up our hands and our voices in your praise. Let me be part of you. Thank you, Lord, because you're so wonderful. By your words, we are the Lord. 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 We are the Lord.
glad to give him the offering as unto the Lord. And so at this time, let us go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. <coughs> Father, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver according to their giving in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You can, uh, if you got some offer, you can bring it to the front. You can pay online if you're online. Uh, right there in the Over there with 
ridiculous, stupid attitude, right? Man. Toward God and toward life. Because it's absolutely comical. You know? Book of 2 Kings chapter 20. We are in verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Let's go to verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Ain't that something? That came from God. So, the Bible says, Then he turned his face to the wall and he gave up. Because God said I was going to die. No, didn't say that. Said that he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech you, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. The Bible said, Hezekiah loved so hard. And it came to pass for uh, and it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again, tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took it and laid it on, on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house? of the Lord the third day. I want to stop right there. It's a lot of reading. I want to preach on a message entitled You Can Change God's Mind. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. A human being can literally change almighty God's mind. Yes. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. And let me tell you something. God is not into wasting your time. He knew who would be listening to this message. He knew it, and he knows who is going to be listening to this message on some time in the future. And if you stumble on this and I'm passed on and I'm up in glory and none of us in the congregation are here uh, anymore, guess what? This message is for you. Right? In the future. Yeah. It's for you today and you in the future. Yeah. And so, so the Lord is still the Lord and the Bible still reads the same way it does now. And so let's have church. Let us pray. Reverend Sorrell, if you don't mind asking God's blessing. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God. You are listening, God. We're playing here to your people, Lord. We appreciate what you do for us, Lord God. Thank you for getting us here, Lord. Pray that you, Lord God, touch your pastor and give him the strength to bring forth that which you laid on his heart, Lord God. And help us to be listeners and doers, Lord God, that which we receive, Lord. And let the result of this service be that your name will be exalted and you will be glorified. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I like our name. Amen. Did I say that right? Amen. Come on, somebody. Did I say that right? One of you Hispanic people? Oh, amen. You got one, one two, three Hispanic people. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun, right? Let's talk about it. You can change God's mind. God's mind. A, when you get saved, rest on this, that you are a child of God. Amen. Yes, sir. And today it was funny how that I was out there weeding, cutting grass, or whatever I was doing. And I said, God will not allow earthly parents to outdo him. Amen. You can find the best parents, think of the best parents out there, whatnot. But no one is a better parent than God. Amen. You know? Amen. And the Bible tells us that God will, will not withhold any good thing from you as a child of God. Listen, y'all, 
and I know that this is a trip, and you cannot uh, approach this with no faith in it. Because if you don't have any faith in this word that I'm about to give you, guess what? You you up the creek without a paddle. That's right. You're not going to win. You can never win. If you cannot believe this, you're on your way out. You're on your way to quit and give it up if you're already saved. And if you cannot believe this and you don't know him in the reality, you will never know God in the reality. Let me tell you something that's the truth that people oftentimes don't believe. Listen to this. He said, if you walk upright before me, he said, I will give you the desires of your heart. And I remember reading in my Bible seminary notes, he said, believe, Pastor David said, believe that the will of God is your will. Believe that the will of God is your will. The things that you want, the things that you desire, believe uh, that it is God's will to why? Because if I walk uprightly before him, he will give me the desires of my heart if I walk uprightly before him. I will have confidence that, that just comes from nowhere. I will have the absolute confidence that I need to do anything if I walk uprightly before him. Because confidence is born through walking uprightly before the Lord uh, for the Christian. The beginning of walking uprightly before the Lord is when we repent of our sins. When we know that we know that we are right. When we know that we know that our sins have been cleansed by the Creator. We know that He hears our prayer. We know that he loves us. We know that his presence is there. We cannot miss uh, the presence of God. Uh, he goes to sleep with us. He wakes up with us. He walks with us everywhere. And we know that we know that he's here. We know that we know that he's in us and outside of us and, and all around us. Uh, while the world walks around without God, while the world walks around blind, we are able to see and we are able to understand his will. And, and because we started walking uprightly before God, and we need to continue to walk right uprightly before God so that we can have confidence. Yeah. You can't have confidence living in sin. Right. You and I can't have confidence telling lies. We cannot have confidence stealing. We cannot have confidence doing things that does not coincide with the word of God. We cannot have confidence if we don't keep uh, the word of God. But Hezekiah had confidence. Why? Because he kept the word of God. Amen. So now Isaiah comes over to him. The prophet who is known as a true man of God. No question of who Isaiah was. And Isaiah came up to Hezekiah and said, get your house in order. Because he said, he said right here, get your house in order. For you, for thou shalt die and not live. He said, thus saith the Lord. Now let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. God don't tell lies. Right. If God says you're going to die, right. you're going to die. Amen. Yes, you will. Right? The Bible tells us that God exalts his word above his name. He exalts his word. His word is above everything. What God is saying is this. If my word is no good, then I'm no good. But the word of God is good. We know that the word is good. Because when he said, let there be light, God said, it is good. Then I think that, if I'm not mistaken, as he kept speaking stuff into existence, the Bible said that he saw that it was very good. God's word is good. Yes. Amen. 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 He said, if you walk up right before me, he said, God is a son and she right. right. Mm -hmm. man walk, if you walk up right before me, I'll give you the desires of, of, of your heart. God is 
not a lie. That's right. Okay. Hezekiah knew how good the word of God yes. was at this time. He knew that God's word is good. Yes. But Hezekiah was a man that walked with God. He was a man that walked with God and he knew that I can come to him and I can pray and he may deliver me out of this. Yes. Though he said this is going to happen. Though he said this is going to come to pass. But his confidence was in the fact that Hezekiah uh, was able to tell God, remember. Remember how I served you. Remember, God, how I walk with you. You see, some people can't tell God, remember how I walk with you. Some people can't tell God, remember how I live for you. Some people can't tell God anything. And so therefore, that prayer won't even come to mind. They'll just take it and they'll just die. But Hezekiah said, remember. Are you with me tonight? Yeah. See, when you can tell God to remember how you walk with him, guess what? That is a true testimony that you've been saved. When you cannot tell God, remember how I walk with you, that is a true testament that you've never been saved. Isn't this all right? And so therefore, our confidence come from living for God. Hezekiah said, remember now, not later. Give me a chance to live for you. No, he said, remember right now how I have walked before thee in truth. Not in hypocrisy. He wasn't two-faced with God. He wasn't one way with God on a, at a moment and another way with God at another moment. He was one face. He was God's child continuously. And so uh, he walked before him in truth and the Bible said and with a perfect heart. His heart was holy toward the Lord. His heart was perfect before God in this that he kept the word of the Lord. Yes. He did not let them slip. He did not let them slide. He hid the word of God in his heart that he would not sin against God. He hid the knowledge. He hid the understanding. And it gave him light and the wherewithal to be able to consistently live this life for God. And it was more important than the kingship. It was more important than his family. It was more important than his babies. He lived for God. First, he put the Lord first. And now God said you're about to die, but Hezekiah said, I beseech you. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. He put God first, so he said, I beseech you. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any con con condemnation. He was scared that he was going to die only. That's it. But all he had, all he did was say, I beseech you. Mm -hmm. He said, I walk before you, you remember it. Do you remember that? Because you know all things. I definitely remember. <laughs> and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in not my sight, in your sight. Are we able to do that which is good in God's sight? Have we been doing that which is good in God's sight? All right. You know what I'm saying? We got to live before the eyes of the Lord. That's right. Right? Not before our own eyes. Not before our wife's eyes, not before our husband's eyes, or whatnot. We got to live before the eyes of the Lord. When God sees our life, uh, the Lord should be pleased, not grieved. Mm -hmm. Isn't this all right? Yes. And your conscience knows when God's eyes are not pleased with what he sees. Right. All right. So because the Holy Spirit is going to let you feel the way what he's feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. Well, anyway, but you don't have to go, uh, tonight. If you go, uh, tonight, change it and get it right. Yes. And so, and he so Hezekiah was able to pray. He talked to God, and God didn't tell him anything. The Bible said he began to weep sore. That man didn't, he just cried sore because uh, he, he, he's like, man, uh, I don't want to die. That's the only reason why he was crying. And so, as the word said, God touched Isaiah, told the man of God to stop. Told the man of God to stop. You know, when you call on the Lord's name, 
be a standstill for us. Amen. Have you ever called on God's name and yes. stood yes. still for you? Yes. I have. Yes. Oh, I'm glad for the times I have. Yes. Yes. And I need to do it tonight, too. I need to call. Because we need something happening around here, right? Amen. Stand still for me. Amen. And that comes from living for God. Yes. You will never yes. know this without living for God. I remember old Donald Trump said the average guy would never know what it is to have a beach house. True. And guess what? <laughs> the hypocrite would never know what it is to have God to stand still for them. That's right, man. You know what I'm saying? Never. Never, ever, never. It's never. So God stood still for him just like he did later on for the blind man. The blind man cried out louder to the Lord. Yes. Jesus stood still and said, somebody's calling my name. All right. God told Isaiah, stop. Mm -hmm. yes. Go, go back over there and tell him. Yes. You're going to live. Amen. Yeah. Give me about three days. I'm going to hook you up. Go on up in the house of the Lord and all that. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to jump on your enemy too. Yeah. I've heard your tears. And I'm your father. And Amen. I love you. And though God probably was a little bit like, man, I really want, you know, kind of want to get everybody on over here where I'm at, but. Because <laughs> I don't know what God was doing in the old time. He probably came on down where they were to fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. If some of us know what I'm talking about, right? He probably just, when he died off, he probably just came down here, Abraham, just give Jesus a few more seconds. And I have you up here where I'm at. Right? So, without going into any details of that, but maybe Hezekiah, you know, God was like, all right, man, I'm going to, I heard your tears, I'm going to give you what you want. And guess what, Hezekiah? I'm going to add 15 years. So Hezekiah walked up right before God, and God added 15 years to his life. Isn't that amazing? Yes. You want to live? You want to live long? You want to live for God? You want to know the Lord like that? You got to walk upright. Yeah. Walking uprightly builds your confidence because you know who you are. Amen. You got to walk yes. upright. Hey, y'all, to go to heaven, you got to walk upright. Mm -hmm. To get heaven to come down, you got to walk upright. I have to walk upright. Yeah. At the end of the day, man, we got to be right, right? That's yeah. right. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, and, you, and, you, and you have to, you have to have. You got to marry Jesus to even be able to sense the presence of God. Amen. You know, and, and you got to marry him, meaning that that the Lord has to be like like when I say marry the Lord, the Lord has to become head of your household. Meaning, I'm talking about your personal. Where I'm not talking about your your mom, your daddy, your grandma, your wife, and all that. I'm talking about you up here. Mm -hmm. The Lord needs to be the head of household in your mind. Right. He needs right. to be the most dominating thing. Yeah. And when the Lord becomes that way, then you begin to honor God daily mm -hmm. because he's there. Mm -hmm. And I've talked about it. I've dealt with it. The key that, the, you know, have you ever heard the saying, I'm about to get out of here. When the cat's away, the mice begin to play, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and so if God is not in somebody's life, they're going to sin. They don't have to worry about that because the mice are going to play. Right. You're going to play. If God ain't really in you, you don't sense him. You don't know him. He's not in your heart. He is not there. There is no awareness. You know? There is no grab or no... Can I testify? I have don't testified this before. I'm about to get out of here. When I first got saved, I was so awestruck <coughs> at that first awareness of the Lord. And I had a nightmare. I like telling these stupid atheists this stuff. I told an atheist this. She said, I don't believe that there's a God. So I was over at the laundromat over here on Pine Noma, sitting down fellowshipping with her, I guess. And I said, well, I said, all I know is this. When I went to sleep, I had a nightmare. Nightmare that I've had as a sinner 
now I'm having it as a Christian. And then as I was falling, all of a sudden, I could I could sense the that I'm that my conscience knows that I'm right with God. Do you know what happened? All of a sudden, while I was falling, I was afraid. Ah! Oh, while I was falling, all of a sudden in my heart, the confidence was there, and I said, I don't even care if I hit the bottom. And that nightmare just came off of me. I said, I don't care because I am right with God. Yeah. The conscious knows. Yes. That is how you, how you sense God's presence. When the conscious knows that it is clear between me and the Creator. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This is the way you want to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to die with your conscience clear with the Creator. Right. Because yeah. when you get ready to pass away, let's say that it is a slow process, you will be the most at peace person mm -hmm. yes. because you are ready to go. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You'll be joking on your deathbed. There That's are right. people who joke around and, and have fun on the way out. They have fun on the way out. I remember talking to this lady. She was about to pass away. I hated that she was about to pass away. And she was doing a, the woman thing to the end. She was, she was signing this. I got to sign all these papers. I mean, she was on the deathbed. She had to sign these certificates, sign all these papers. And I, and, and I think she looked kind of frustrated about her last few minutes. But she was just, she said, I look at it like this. Just like surgery, you just close your eyes, you wake up, you see Jesus. That's where I look at it. That's what she told me. I never seen somebody so relaxed. I mean, so relaxed. She, her skin was, I mean, she was almost a bones. I mean, she looked so small. And, and the last thing we did, I, I did a funny salute because I'm comical. I said, I, I did a left hand salute. I said, uh, I said, I see you in glory. And we did a fist bump. We did like this. Is <laughs> <laughs> she talking all this mess up? But I didn't have nothing to tell Jesus. I said, I said, yeah, you think you're gonna just tell Jesus? You just get there and find out first before you. And, and because because we talking about you are gonna see the real deal. You ain't gonna be talking about. I'm gonna tell Jesus, bless your family, bless your turn. Just wait till you get there because you might not say nothing. That's true. Hey, let's sing a song. Let's find a place to pray. Or you can stand and praise Him or whatever you want to do. But, but walk upright and have faith in Him. you got to do it. Build your confidence. Have faith in Him. God is in the helping business. Pastor, I have a, you start out with repentance. Then you keep God's word. You keep His word. Keep the word of the Lord. You walk with Jesus. You, you pray and you're praising. And through your praying and through your praising, you get influence to live for God. You get influence and you read and you come to church and all that. You ready?
Praise the Lord. Amen. It's been good. It's been for real. Remember worship service Sunday morning at uh, eight, what time did we start? 8 30. 8 30 a.m. So be there. May God bless you real good. Invite someone out to the house of the Lord and get over your fear. Invite somebody out. They won't bite. They don't bite. They will not hurt you.